Are YouTubers that regularly put out cryptid stories simply gullible and genuinely believe everything they read and hear? Or are they downright lying to us with fake horror or UFO stories, allowing their focus on monetizing from YouTube and AdSense to drive their greed? The possibilities are lucrative. $122 for every 1,000 views, while 1,000 subscribers could reasonably expect to bring in $10 to $300 in monthly AdSense revenue. Quite a profit. Many claim they get their horror tales from Reddit. I thought that this wasn't allowed when monetizing YouTube. Others still claim to receive missing person cases and or horror accounts directly from viewers and subscribers via emails. I myself am interested in cryptids and conspiracies, that is a CIA ploy to derail JFK's Warren Commission critics. As I believe that the world around us is not what we think it to be. Of course, most accounts out there are simply twisted or evil humans causing mayhem or terror. But after disregarding obvious missing person theories, i.e. weather, accidents, health conditions, animal attacks, kidnap, etc., some are about strange unexplained paranormal or occult activity, or are bizarre and unsolved missing people cases, including children. Many seem to suddenly disappear within seconds, even with other people present, and are, sadly, never seen again. At least alive. Child cases like Jarad Atadero or Dennis Martin. The former disappeared in October 1999 in the Arapaho and Roosevelt National Forest in Colorado. Three-year-old Jarad, his six-year-old sister Jocelyn, and 11 other young adults were hiking the Big South Trail near Rocky Mountain National Park. While hiking, the group spread out as people of varying abilities do. Jared ran ahead, no more than 100 feet and continued down the trail ahead of the group. This would be the last time anyone ever saw the boy. There are many theories, strange updates and controversial and odd behaviors and attitudes by the park rangers and cops. Various search experts offered to help, even a senator offered to help but dropped out, saying he received mysterious telephone death threats. The latter occurred in July 1969 in the Great Smoky Mountains, Tennessee, on a sunny day when six-year-old Dennis was with his older brother, father and grandfather. They were taking a rest near a glade and the boys hid not far away behind bushes aiming to jump out. But Dennis never did. The case was huge and even involved the FBI, even though they had no jurisdiction unless a crime had been committed. But it gets stranger. 80 Green Berets showed up to help and refused to cooperate with the feds or rangers. Really? At the height of the Vietnam War? So the government affords the time and extortionate cost to divert 80 elite and armed special service soldiers to look for the missing child at night? On several discussion forums, a man calling himself Max, claiming to be former U.S. Special Forces, had this to say. I've read some incredibly uninformed and ignorant comments here and I feel it's my responsibility to help out when appropriate. My name is Max and I am a retired Army SOCOM commander. Spent 26 years in service with most of them attached to 10th Mountain Division in Colorado. Our special forces are never called to assist in civilian operations. That falls to the local National Guard and approved by the state governor. The fact that they were armed as well is another huge no-no, and during my command and every other mission I was aware of we were not allowed by federal protocol to do either. Something is very wrong with this missing kid scenario. I've done some research on this case both while on active duty and after my retirement. The inside facts of this case depict a frightening investigation. Bottom line is that searching started within a few minutes of the boy's disappearance and lasted three months with every resource imaginable being deployed. Don't even start with, the terrain was difficult, holes and caves and cliffs and creeks, etc. Our special troops can find almost anything. Anytime and in any terrain. 
We have the highest technology available worldwide and easily the best training and real-world wartime and mission-specific experience that the normal civilian populace can scarcely imagine. After studying this case, the fact that no trace of the boy was ever found is mind-boggling. The Green Berets that were tasked in this search were there for a specific reason. They were armed for a specific reason. I can't and won't say why because my oath documents won't allow it. But I will remind you of these facts. Nationwide there have only been four occasions where the special forces were brought in on a civilian missing persons case. Two of these involved a possible armed perpetrator. The other two were this case and another similar to it about three years later and regionally nearby. This is out of thousands of missing cases since the early 60s when our special troops were born. There is no such thing as, well, they were training nearby anyway and. Nope, we as commanders were never allowed to divert orders unless the division general officer, at least a one star, within Sockham approved it. For that to happen, it must be for reasons that have a direct effect on our national security. No missing persons case has ever been on that level ever based on its own merit. My research proved that to my own eyes. In conclusion, this case goes way beyond a simple missing boy. Let me put it this way to you skeptics out there. In 1969, same year as this case, in the southern jungles of Cambodia we lost a man on team maneuvers one night. This was in some of the worst weather and impossible terrain known in this world. His tracks were instantly washed away and nighttime operations were notoriously difficult as a rule. After a week's time, it was our dogs that finally tracked him down. They live for these missions and they love it. In the Martin case, the dogs just laid down whining and refused to search. Several sets of dogs of different breeds. The FBI second in command told me this in person. That fact alone promotes the high strangeness factor. These cases are far from normal and must be reinvestigated to ensure that the horror that this family went through never happens to anyone again. When it's your child that slips off for just a minute and the panic sets in and assets are immediately deployed in great mass. You would expect to find the child pretty quick. But when they just flat disappear like smoke as in this case, it baffles even the most experienced of us and breaks our hearts as well. I hope this hideous event never happens to any of you for I have seen it many times firsthand and you just cannot imagine anything worse. God bless. Dead or otherwise, those children found after days or weeks missing seem to have traversed impossible distances over mountain ranges and harsh terrain and in freezing or bad weather conditions with no footwear, food, water or shelter. Quite often they are unable to explain how they disappeared, or whom or what they were with. Also often without scratches and sometimes apparently not dehydrated or starving despite supposedly being alone in deep woods. Men have even been reported missing for months, even years, thinking they have been gone for minutes. Some of these missing stories, featured on the many cryptid YouTube channels, are inexplicable cases of missing persons or terrifying close-up experiences that have even baffled the experienced and veteran search teams, rangers and cops. Also there are personal tales from even such trained observers, whose credibility is hard to refute, of things more horrific in the national parks, woods and suburban regions. News reports of dead bodies and closed-off areas, labeled bear or cougar attacks, despite the circumstances, location or behavior of humans or animals. For those who do disbelieve everything cryptid, consider this. The peaceful gorilla was once considered a cryptid. As were the platypus, kangaroo, giant squid, komodo dragon, and the still existing coelacanth. Classifications change over time, as does society, evidence, and the technology to acquire it. Also, Champ. The alleged Loch Ness type monster that is supposed to live in Lake Champlain, New York, is legally protected by the US government. Several U.S. national parks have many warning signs on their trails regarding the dangers of Bigfoot and to keep children safe. 
Mrs. Thatcher, British Prime Minister in the 80s, secretly ordered searches for the Loch Ness Monster using dolphins. But it was instead decided to officially protect Nessie under the Wildlife and Countryside Act 1981. Some UFO or cryptid witnesses around the world, including police and park rangers, have reported being harassed or even threatened by mysterious men from some agency or other. If they don't exist, why does this happen? Now the US government admits that UFOs do exist, following the lead of the Belgian government and Air Force decades before them. Archaeologists used to declare finds of colossal humanoid bones resembling giant humans, and there are many dark rumors that the Smithsonian have secret them away. US and other troops over the decades have filed official reports of huge apes and or giants attacking them, especially in remote war zones. Different YouTube channels produce stories and reports of varying length and detail, supposedly information from the public or whistleblowing professionals wishing to maintain anonymity and thus keep their jobs. These stories are either sent into the channel owners directly, or lifted the stories from other websites like Reddit, newspapers, TV reports or blogs. In my personal view, some of the YouTube cryptid and horror channels, narrators' voices, content and styles are better than others. This has sometimes changed over time, as they also have. I started mostly by listening to former cop-turned-Bigfoot investigator Dave Paul Edes and his 411 stories of missing person cases that supposedly baffled cops, professional search teams and park rangers. Details were shocking, upsetting and mystifying, especially as many involved toddlers. Slowly though, I found that other sources and channels covering the same topics in depth revealed aspects that Paul E.D. seemed to have omitted, or exaggerated, i.e., the 1969 Dennis Martin tragedy. I looked into this generally and found a slew of unrelated accounts and reports of dishonesty whilst he was a serving cop. Twinned with this unsavory revelation, as well as the omitted details about some missing cases, he was making money from the many books and films and aforementioned YouTube money. Critics of his on Amazon and various blogs have reported having been met with a defensive tirade from him that wasn't warranted or very pleasant. I moved on to various other channels that are similar or crossover in that they narrate allegedly real horror tales in various settings, or relate cryptid attacks etc. They don't ask for likes or beg viewers to subscribe. Even if they did monetize, they don't churn out endless yarns per day or week, so their quality and credibility are high and, to me, more believable. Plus, many stories are what they personally experienced. Amongst others I used to subscribe to are What Lurks, Dixie Cryptids and Jeff Nadolny's Dogmen. But, again, as they are making money from the amount of viewers, subscribers and selling merchandise, I was suspicious of their impartiality and channel content. How many cryptids really attack or stalk humans on that regular basis? The first two repeatedly ignored personal, polite emails regarding cryptids, missing people etc. One was a detailed critique of Paul E.D.'s whom he was praising unconditionally, the other regarding a joke impression of his accent, as he had previously joked also about my country's accents and pronunciations. The third example mentioned was a short but weird experience. I emailed Jeffrey Nadolny, his email was on his public channel, regarding a short video online which he showcased as serious and believable on his channel without question. It purported to be a clip of a congressman in the U.S. Senate, passing a bill relating to funding the U.S. military to fight terrifying unknown creatures and containing the public in the event of mass panic and infection. The video was admittedly convincing initially, but turned out to be a parody by the Onion team, notorious for convincing political videos. There was no congressman by that name and the Onion team had in the past done many similar videos, with their logo visible. I dug into the publicly available U.S. Congress files for the man speaking, the bill number and other factors. Nothing. So I sent him proof of this with links to their website and to similar videos. Instead of engaging me, debating with me or even replying with a brief thanks, he sent me several sarcastic and nasty emails in reply. 
Obviously he was either angry that I dared to question his godlike knowledge or trust in the topic, or he was just embarrassed that he was totally suckered. Again, I am not a wallflower, so I responded likewise, reminding him about his previous gullibility, of being so close to his cryptid subject matter that he previously had been willing to rigidly believe in a supposed high-level secret CIA werewolf hunter who emailed him and kept sending him unbelievable stories. Ones about underground secret laboratories and breeding programs to release weaponized werewolves. Then, bizarrely, within 14 hours he made a quite self-pitying, dejected video calling a truce to other cryptid fans and apologizing to anyone he had insulted. I think that he, and to a lesser extent some others, in my direct experience or reading hearing about others, do not have the correct mentality or temperament to be detached enough from their topic in order to evaluate and analyze information accurately. And we are free to believe whatever we wish to. Or not. I just hope that there are no such horrifying creatures, sinister agencies, pedophile rings, powerful occultist elites, or UFOs taking, experimenting on or attacking people in the cities, parks and woodlands of large, ancient continental expanses of the US, Canada, Asia or Europe. But, given the slew of disturbing reports by highly trained professionals and first-hand accounts by hunters and military vets over the decades, I sadly accept that there is.